and happiness Yeah Something that can make you do wrong Make you do right Yeah
Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the family, we would uh, just like to say thank you very much for being here. Uh, the family really appreciates your presence and your words of comfort. At this time, we're going to begin, and so we're going to ask uh, the funeral directors to close the casket. Uh, we really appreciate your presence here, and uh, we know that there are so many of us here, there may not be enough space inside the actual sanctuary to house all of us, but uh, you will be able to hear the service from the outs, uh, from the foyer era. Uh, the sound technicians have uh, allowed us to be able to hear the service from the benches uh, right in front of the sanctuary. We want to thank you for being here. We know that on behalf of the family, we thank you for your words, your presence, and your prayers. And at this time, we're going to begin the service. behalf of the Fail Farm family as well, I'd like to welcome each and every one of you here. This is not a joyous occasion. This is a very sad one. It is one in which our hearts go out in a mighty way to the immediate members of the family and also to the relatives and friends. It's very clear, if you just look around, to see how loved Bernal was. And we have a hope that burns within us. And that hope is that soon, and very soon, we will be reunited with our loved ones who have moved on and left us behind. I'd like to share something with you that's very important. It says, listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed in a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable. And we will be changed, for the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable. And I really like what is on the back of the announcement of Burnell's funeral. And this is so true of the dynamic individual he certainly was. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Father God, we petition your heavenly throne, dear Lord, in this moment of sadness, but with the caveat of joy that it won't be long before the resurrection occurs. We see the times around us moving in that direction. We see it in all aspects of our daily lives. We, dear Lord, therefore, ask you to give us the strength, give Kenya, give children, Give the close relatives, give the friends the strength to hang on because they will see their loved one again. In Jesus' name, amen.
when oh my soul so weary when trouble come and my heart burden be then I am still and wait here in the silence until you come and sit a while with me you raise me up so I can stand on mountains you raise me up to walk on stormy shoulders you raise me up to more than I can be there is no love no love without its hunger each restless heart beat so imperfectly but you come and I am filled with wonder sometimes I think I glimpse eternal referred to as Jai by family, passed away peacefully on November 4th, 2016 in Salt Lake City at the age of 47, surrounded by family and close friends after a long and courageous battle with cancer. 
Born on January 25th, 1969, in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, to Christine and Barnell Fail Sr. Barnell was the first son to his parents. His love of sports started at an early age, and football was his first love. His early talents were developed playing football at Piper High School, where he graduated in 1986. After graduation, Barnell moved to West Virginia and then on to California, where he played junior college, junior college football at San Jose City College before transferring to his beloved University of Utah. Barnell ended his college football career at Mesa State College, earning a spot on the All Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference teams in 1994 and 1995. He returned to the University of Utah, where he completed his bachelor's degree in 1996. The relationships he formed during these years proved to be strong, and Barnell considered his teammates as extended family members. Barnell married Kenya, the love of his life, in 1994, after establishing their home in West Valley and later Sandy. Barnell worked for the Salt Lake Detention Center as a counselor, then supervisor slash team lead, and finally treatment supervisor. His position at Delta Airlines supported his family's love of traveling and enabled the family to visit many domestic and international destinations. He touched many lives as a mortgage loan advisor at Advance Funding, where he graciously assisted countless individuals with their dream of home ownership. Together, Barnell and Kenya raised Cameron, Sequoia, and Braylon with care. His children will remember him as a kind, gentle, and fun-loving father who encouraged them to pursue goals and never settle for anything less than their best. Barnell was known for his huge heart. His friends and family grew accustomed to his willingness to help at a moment's notice. He never failed to give a helping hand and could be counted on to answer the call of a friend in need. His charismatic and magnetic personality was a joy to all who knew him. Those who knew him were blessed to learn, men, to learn many values, valuable lessons from him. His positive attitude was inspiring to many people. Over the past two years, he did everything possible to fight cancer in a physical sense. He humbly acknowledged a bless the blessings of an extended life because of many prayers. Barnell is survived by his loving wife of 23 years, Kenya, children, Cameron, Sequoia, and Braylon, mother, Christine Ruben Crisado, brothers, Cornell Fail, Ashasa, Terrell Fail, Cynthia, Purnell Fail, Edwin Walker, and several nieces and nephews. He was preceded in death by his father, Braylon Fail Sr. The family would like to express its sincere appreciation to the many friends who provided support during Vernell's illness, Wasatch Hills and Central SDA churches, Delta Airlines, Advanced Funding, his University of Utah football family, and his DT family, as well as countless neighbors and other close friends. Also, a special thank you to the staff at the Huntsman Cancer Institute and Bone Marrow Transplant Clinic for their compassionate care, dedication, and commitment during his courageous battle. is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. 
Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy, mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Psalms 23. Um, at this time, we're going to be hearing several tributes um, from people that uh, were designated to come and share with family and friends. Um, as you can see, there's only a handful of names um, on the program, uh, but we know there's probably several people here who want to share memories or um, special stories with the family. So please uh, stay behind for the lunch afterwards and we prepared um, some time for that to occur. And I know that will really be comforting to Kenya um, and her children if you could do that. My name is Ayana Harrison. And I've been tasked uh, with the um, privilege of sharing uh, tributes um, I'm representative as, of my family. And because Barnell uh, fell in love with my beautiful big sister, um, I have the privilege of calling him uh, brother. He's my brother-in-law. Um, I'd just like to share a few things with you about him that I found most endearing and that um, uh, drew me to love him. The first was that he was a very humble giver. Kenya and I were uh, the typical struggling college students um, working um, to pay for our tuition, to pay for our books, uh, to pay for our dorm room. And sometimes that meant the budget was pretty tight. So often food was the last thing that we were able to uh, purchase. And um, not long after meeting Barnell, I want to say it was about three weeks, maybe even not even a month, we received a knock on our dorm room door. We opened it to find him, and he, you know, ushered himself in and unzipped his jacket, and out came bread and lunch meat and cheese and macaroni salad and potato salad and other things and. We quickly learned that these were items that he had tamed from football meetings. <laughs> but he brought back for us to eat. And uh, it was those, those visits became regular. And I don't know how he knew. I don't know who told him the need that we had. Uh, we hadn't known him long. I don't know if he knew how comforting that was for us just to know that there was somebody else out there looking out for us. You know, and I tried to thank him, and he'd brush me off. Uh, because he didn't want recognition, that was Barnell. He, um, he helped when he saw a need, and he didn't want accolades in return. He was a helpful, caring, and most importantly, very humble man. The second was he was a very hard worker, during their early courting days, Barnell worked construction. And I always admired his ability to handle football, school, and on top of that, a job. His visits for our room were regular, and sometimes they were often announced by the presence of his work boots. <laughs> In fact, there was times I noticed his boots before I noticed him. I'd come in our small room and find him there with his big smile. And there were his boots. And I'm sure you can imagine after long days working in construction, they carried their own special aroma. <laughs> but I endured them because uh, he had grown on me. And I loved him. And I silently chuckled when Kenya would fuss at the aroma that they bring. And it, uh, one day I came home to our room and noticed that I didn't see the boots, or I didn't smell the boots, and I didn't know where they had gone. But he was there, and shortly after I noticed the window was cracked, and Barnell, being his resourceful self, 
had hung his boots out the window connected, <laughs> connected to the window crank. I admired him because of his work ethic, because of his ability to handle so much with grace, and at the same time, still desire to please my sister and make her environment a pleasant one. He was one of the hardest working men I knew, and after college, he often held down two or three jobs at a time, and in fact, it became a budding joke in our family. How many, how many jobs does Barnell have now? He worked hard to support his family and give them the life that he felt they deserved. Lastly, the thing I admired most about Barnell was his unconditional, undying love for my sister. From birth at this point in college, it had just been the two of us. Uh, we'd been through a lot together, and while our age difference uh, is there, there hasn't been much we haven't experienced together. And college was just one of those things. And so at the entrance of Barnell, you can imagine, as the protective little sister, I often question his presence. And I remember attending a party uh, with Kenya and uh, someone coming to me telling me she had been injured. Um, and so me doing what I do, and my kids can attest to this, I immediately began to freak. And I run to her and I find her holding her ear and was bleeding. And I'm trying to fuss at her and get to her and she's giggling, that's my sister. And I couldn't get her to cooperate, but there was Barnell and he quickly told me, Yana, Yana, I got this. My first response was anger. Who is, he hasn't been on the scene very long. This is my job. I'm her protector. But as I watched him care for her, as I watched him calm her, I felt a sense of relief because at that moment I knew I wasn't alone and that I had a partner, someone to help me take care of her. And it took me a while. I didn't hand over those reins easily. But eventually I did, and I was glad for it. And those words he uttered that day, he kept true to those. He took care of her for those 28 years. He watched her, he loved her, he protected her. He loved her unconditionally, off all her faults and all her weaknesses. Neither one of them perfect, uh, but 23 years ago, they were married, and I was able to watch these two imperfect people share a perfect love. And for that, I'm grateful. And uh, he was just a great man, a great friend, a great husband, a father, son, nephew, and brother-in-law to me. And our family will be forever grateful for his presence, and he'll forever be in our hearts. First and foremost, no more tears. I'm done crying. I want everybody to know that. It's a joyous occasion. Uh, the reason being, God gave me somebody who was uh, not a match, but a barometer for me to chase as far as uh, supremacy. The guy was outgoing, emotional, committed, loved his family. If you guys don't know yet, my name is Jim Bellamy. I'm the wild one in the family. <laughs> Kenya Barnell and I, we met 23 years ago? 22? 25? I was trying not to get my age, but you just killed it there. It's OK. It's OK. I still look good, right? All right. I came up to talk about a few things, but they told me my time was limited to a couple of minutes. So I'm going to sum it up in a few things. First of all, most people say, you find a person that is meant for you, you call them a soulmate, correct? I still remember the moment Barnell told me he was trying to talk to Kenya. I was like, Kenya? <laughs> now you gotta remember, this is two Southern brothers coming from Florida and we just buck wild and Kenya? 
Are you honest, Sister Kelly? Okay. But the love and the admiration he showed for Kenya, I began to get kind of jealous. I was like, oh, yeah, Kenya. <laughs> so upon them getting together, and I was dating Tracy Lawrence at the time. I think she's back there. <laughs> <laughs> The, the four of us became like inseparable. I don't know if you ever went to the U of U, but you have a dorm room about the size of his casket. And there's a bed here, a bed there, and a chair there, and a chair there. And uh, for about two years, Kenyon Barnell was here, and we were over here. And if you roll out to go to the bathroom, you knew. If you did other things, you knew. You know? <laughs> But when I saw those two, I knew that's what love and soulmate is about. But in the same breath, the first time I knew Barnell, I knew that was my soul brother. You see what I'm saying? You have a real brother, you have a God brother, you have a blood brother, but I knew he was my soul brother. I got brothers in arms in here who played football with me. I got Reggie Jones, who's my brother. I got my son, I got, he was my soul brother, meaning nothing you can say or do can deny that that's my brother. Now, for those who go back 25 years, if you walk down the wrong alley with me and Barnell, you was in trouble. We did not play. But when you saw him, you saw me. When you saw me, you saw him. And Kenya came. So when you saw Kenya, you saw Barnell, you saw me. <laughs> but it was OK. I accepted that. I was cool with that. I came here to tell you that I have always been the outgoing one. I've always been the loud one. I've always been the first one to say hello when you walked in the room. And Barnell was the one who said, I got your back. Do what you do. No problem. We're good. We're good. But over the years, God kind of touched him. And it was almost a race to see who was saying hello first to people. You know, look at this congregation. Look at the people here. Look at, this is not Facebook. This is people who actually know and touch and have been around Barnell. This is real. This ain't nothing made up. I mean, this is a bigger turnout than Trump got when he won. <laughs> I have no problem. I support our president. Don't, don't get it wrong. A lot of people say I do a lot of things that they admire as, as far as Barnell, but I only do it because he do the same thing for me. And I, I think people need to take a second and look at what you have here and realize that certain things are just not that important. You got family, friends, loved ones. You need to take the time to appreciate them because you don't know when they're going to be here and when they're not. So. I met, I met the preacher, I met Yana's husband for the first time. I mean, I'll tell you a quick story and I get up, Kenya, I know I got two minutes. I'm quick. <laughs> uh, Barnell got sick. He fell sick on Halloween and we came in and we put him in the hospital so I was flying back and forth. So the last trip, I got on the plane and I'm not a talker when I go on the plane. I want to watch my movies that I haven't had a chance to check up with. I mean, you know, I'm watch my movies. And this is a scruffy white guy sitting next to me. Oh bearded out and had a spit cup and legs all crossed up. And, and I'm from Florida, you know, those rednecks, we don't talk to them. <laughs> so he sat there and I looked up and his bad said, Delta. And God said, stop being stupid, say hello. So I swallowed, okay, yes sir. I looked over, I said, hey man, uh, you work for Delta in Salt Lake? And when he said, yeah, I do. I knew he was just like me, meaning he didn't want to talk to nobody. Why are you talking to me? Why are you asking me these stupid questions? <laughs> but something told me to persist. And I said, well, I'm going to see my, I'm going to see my brother. Uh, his health is deteriorating. And you know we're all trying to be there to push him and help him fight. And he said, you're Jimmy. Uh, yeah. He said, you're talking about Barnell, right? I said, yeah. He said, I'm Spanky. I said, you Spanky? <laughs> <laughs> and just to prove this is a true story and God works in amazing ways, Spanky, can you stand up? Where you at? Where is he? There he is, right there. He shaved. 
he absolutely shaved. So I, I was down, I was miserable, I was not liking anybody, anybody. Reggie, Kenya, Barnell, Cameron, it didn't matter. I just, I didn't accept the outcome at the time. But when I talked to him on a plane with the circumstances being a million, the variables just being that much different, I knew it was time for me to accept that God had called his soldier home. And at that time, it was time for me to look to take care of other folks in his family and be the brother that he always wanted me to be. So you guys just remember that. Thank you. Heresy. I work with, with um, Barnell <clears throat> for like 18 years. That man had more jobs. He's the only one I know that can be in the bin of a plane and working alone. <laughs> I'm like, what are you doing? Oh, man. Oh, wait, wait, wait. And I mean, he don't miss a beat. Stacking bags, working papers, stacking bags. I'm like, dog, can we get this plane? Oh, don't worry about it. I got you. And just like he said, when he got you, he got you. Everything is good. This is like unreal. But um, there's a lot of um, ch um, when, um, chickens now that are happy. Because me and him used to kill them. <laughs> We'd be at work, we, we would kill some chickens. <laughs> We'd be one, one night, me and him ate 40 of them, 40 chickens. I was hurting, he was hurting. <laughs> yeah, I mean, me and him, well, we used to put it away. And you look like you could throw it down too, so. <laughs> so, but uh, my man had a big heart, big heart. And a lot of people at um, De Elton now, you're not gonna get a house. Because he used to get it in. He used to go, hey, you know what, I can get you in. And his favorite saying, if I can't do it, it can't be done. <laughs> and that's what he used to do. But uh, that's my man. This is very hard. First of all, I just want to say aloha. Aloha, okay. In Hawaiian, aloha means hello, goodbye, I love you, and wishing him well. My name is Wilton Lolofie. I work with Barnell and a bunch of other people in this congregation for about 20 years over at the Juvenile Detention Center. And so I hope what I say that may comfort uh, the family, Kenya, the children, comes from the heart of everybody from detention, from the courts, from JJS, and everybody that Bornell's heart has touched. Maybe someday uh, you can have Jimmy uh, tell you guys the story about when they drove back uh, from Utah to Florida. It is funny. Oh. Florida to Utah. Oh, Florida to Utah. You know, I, I was thinking the other day, what are some words that I, I think of Barnell? And some of the words that describe our relationship, our detention family, Caring, he's very loyal, funny, happy, driven, just an all-around good person, encouraging. He's a big foodie, too. So every time we go somewhere, he'll, he'll tell me, you know, well, we got to go try this place out. Um, you know, one of the funny things is we love Vietnamese pho soup. 
And so my wife always cracks me up because she says, well, that's kind of weird. Two big guys going to eat soup? Yeah. <laughs> but you guys haven't had uh, pho soup? Go have it. His favorite is extra chicken and a fork because he can't use chopsticks. <laughs> I was uh, also laughing at the gentleman that spoke before me. Barnell had a thousand jobs. He's, he's a jack of all trades. We would um, be doing something and uh, trying to fix our computer at work. And he said, oh, well, I got it. I, I used to do this. I look at him and say, forget it. But then he'd fix it. We talk about finances. He says, well, I got it. I, I do mortgage. I, I know all kinds of stuff. I said, forget it. And he said, yeah, I, I got it. And one day he told me, well, I used to fly planes. <laughs> and he did. <laughs> yeah. I think a lot of people at detention got along well with him because um, he was truly a Utah man. Even though he's from Miami, from the South, he loves Utah. You know, Bernal, he's, uh, he's actually a pretty good leader. He, um, he was in, in charge of our uh, intake and control area for the last several years. But every time we had a kid go off in the, in the juvenile facility, and this is a 160-bed facility, pretty big, and we get kids from 12 years old to 18, and sometimes they're there till 21, so some of those kids are pretty big. And so a duress would go off, and everybody go running to that area, and Barnell is usually one of the first ones there. And my office was a little behind his, so I, I always felt good that he'd be in front of me. And so we get there, and then, OK, let's do this. Let's do that. Get that kid safe. And so we, uh, we restrain the kid and get that kid back un under control. Although one time, the duress went off. And here I go. I'm following Barnell back in. And we come to this room, and uh, we kind of look at staff that were already there watching the kids. And their eyes were like big, wide open. <clears throat> so we walk over there, and we open that, that cell door. And the, red was, uh, the room was red, red with blood. And so this kid had bitten his wrist and flicked blood all over and on the floor, on the wall, all over him. Bernal looked at that. He turned around to me and said, Will, you and Sui, you go first. <laughs> oh, that was one time Barnell did not want to go first, but a sucker. <laughs> You know, um, he truly loved kids and families. Um, he always helping the kids in our facility, always helping their parents that come there. And even in the last couple years since his health has uh, declined and he started to get sicker and sicker, he was still helping families. He would help families um, with the mortgage and securing a, a home for those families, the first time home buyers. Um, just a huge heart. Um, I love that guy. You know what's funny is uh, one day uh, when he was up at Huntsman Cancer Institute and I went by to see him and he wasn't doing so well. He was just laying there a little bummed out and uh, the nurses come in and they're like all oh, happy and cheery and oh hi Bernal, let's get this doing and let's get this going. And, um, you know, I get talking to the nurses, and they love the, uh, the nurses love Barnell so much. I go, what do you guys talk about? He says, oh, he's helped me with my finances. <laughs> and I look at him, and I go, come on, Barnell. Uh, uh, that guy is so good. You know, I just want to say to Kenya, you know, uh, from the bottom of our heart, and my heart, and detention family, we love you. And you always have our support. We're right here. Please stay close to your faith, your family. And I know time will not take the hurt away, but it will soften it. 
Continue to cherish your memories together with him. To Cameron, Sequoia, Braylon, love you kids. Cherish your memories and your experiences with your dad and mom. Study, and work hard, accomplish those dreams you set. Pray often, be kind, and take care of one another. And be the kind of person that your mom and dad raised you to be. This is the time now. Please stay close to your mother. Everyone else, my detention family, friends, Bernal's family, although, although this terrible disease has taken the father, the husband, the brother, son, our friend, we will miss Barnell the man, but let's cherish his legacy, the memories, the experiences, the stories to help us lead our lives. I leave you with this quote, humanity should be our race and love should be our religion. One love. Good afternoon. Um, my name is Carol Pierce, and I was lucky enough to um, be asked by we were asked to uh, asked by Kenya to represent advanced funding and and what Barmnail meant to us at, in in our our family at work. Um, so it's a great pleasure, and thank you. Um, Barnell actually worked for with the with our office family for about 11 years. Um, as most of you know, Barnell. Ha could not just maintain one job. He always had several jobs. Um, he amazed me how he could maintain all of that. And all, we all knew at Advanced Fending what was most important to Barnell, and that was Kenya and his kids. Um, he talked frequently about them, about their lives, what they did, what they were doing, what they were up to, the trips they took. Um, Barnell was always goal-driven. And uh, we knew that his main goal was to, to make his family happy and to uh, support his family. Um, I asked around the office uh, just some comments for how people, maybe some things they wanted me to share. Um, one of them shared how little things really mattered and you could make him happy with just little things. And one day he had an alligator clip in, in, on some papers and he told one of our loan officers, I really like these things. And that loan officer brought over a box of them and you would have thought it was Christmas to get a box of alligator clips. <laughs> Another one spoke of his um, positive attitude and as he was getting sick and going through the hard times, um, she actually works down south so she was in when Barnell was back after the cancer, after the um, chemo treatments were all over and he said, I'm chemo free, he says, I'm cancer free and he goes, if I can beat cancer, I can do anything. And he had such hopes at that point. And um, as you all know, uh, our Heavenly Father had a different plan for him. Um, another one shared what a great um, giant and a spirit he was, what a, a brother he was to all of us, implying um, he was so full of life. What you knew when he walked into the office, um, he had such intelligence, he loved helping people get into homes. It, there, I don't think anybody I've ever met has helped as many and has gotten the comments that Barnell got back from his clients out of all of the loan officers, and we've been in, in business for many years. He, number one, we got more comments, written comments, about the job he did and how much they felt really his love for them and, and knowing he was it was his best their best interest was in they were in his hands um, during his illness um, there was a colleague that we work with in our industry that was battling 
and, and still a little bit is battling the same situation. And um, I'll never forget, I, I took, her, took Barnell up to her at a trade show we had, and they just, I kind of walked away because they had a lot in common. And afterwards, um, she said she'd never, ever felt like she did, the hope that she had because he was just so positive and it was during his chemo and he was telling her how he was still going to the gym and working out and just a super strong man. Um, we, he and I had a standing joke. Um, he, was, he was always the fix-it man around the office um, and we had a standing joke because about our cell phone choices. I have an iPhone and I'd say, I'd start complaining about something that wasn't working and he'd tell me if you had a real phone, I could help you. Um, <laughs> and um, one day I, he overheard me trying to get a rental car in LA. I was, ta I was traveling to LA and within seconds I had a car booked and ready to go. He, he had taken, he, he had all of our backs. Um, in the 22 years that advanced funding has been in business, we have never had a team member that loved his clients and loved his job so much. Um, there's lots of testimonials about Barnell on our website. It, it, they're, they're just amazing. And I wanted to fit some in, but there's just not time. Um, seeing him fight so hard during the cancer treatment made me realize his love of life and how much he loved his precious children and his amazing wife. He was an inspiration to all of us. He was truly a privilege to know. He was so proud of his kids. We knew when um, Sequoia was playing basketball, when she was playing um, volleyball. Volleyball ended up being the sport, and he was pretty happy about that. Um, we knew when Cameron was coming to town. Um, luckily, we got to meet Cameron uh, as, as Barnell was here this, the last few times. Um, and then um, we knew when his boy, his little boy, um, was playing basketball or when he was playing track, when he was running track and how fast he was. And, and uh, he would tell us the stories that um, he had said, Dad, I don't know why, but I just can shoot more baskets than one of the little neighbor boys. And he says, it's really easy. And how proud Barnell was of that. He seemed to have a different outlook on life after uh, fighting the cancer and, and going through what he had. He never took anything for granted. And again, he taught us so much. Um, I never heard Barnell speak ill of anyone about anything or anything. He was right to the point, you knew he meant business, but he, he never spoke ill of anyone. Um, he will be missed. Words can't express how much he'll be with, missed. Can you know Barnell loved you, and he loved his kids? He's by your side during your grieving. Let him wrap your, his arms around you. I testify that your Heavenly Father loves you and that you will be with your love once again. And I say this in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. So for anybody that knew Barnell, he was the epitome of, of being a, a product of the American dream. <laughs> Knowing where Barnell came from, the reason he had so many jobs was every job was an opportunity. It was, <laughs> it was a chance for him to do something and be something that growing up, he could have never even imagined. I learned a lot from her now. I started having kids way before him, but, <laughs> but way before him. But, one thing I want to say is that at any point in time, in any discussion, if his wife or his kids came up, a pride and a joy came across his face. That 
you knew, you knew that that was where his heart was. And so I, I want to say, Cameron, Koya, and Braylon, your dad was a great, great man. There is nothing, nothing that he wouldn't do for you guys. And I'll never be him, but if there's ever anything that you guys need, I don't, it doesn't matter when, where, how. If you need it and you call me, you got it because that's my brother. That's my brother. Thanks. The fallen limb. A limb has fallen from the family tree. I keep hearing a voice that says, grieve not for me. Remember the best times, the laughter of the song, the good life I lived while I was strong. Continue my heritage, I'm counting on you. Keep smiling and surely the sun will shine through. My mind is at ease, my soul is at rest, remembering all how, truly, how I truly was blessed. Continue traditions, no matter how small. Go on with your life, don't worry about falls. I miss you all dearly, so keep up your chin until the day comes we're together again.
as he placed on me heaven's crown. I fell down on my knees as I laid crown at his feet. Then he said, tenderly, this one's with me. As I listen to those testimonies, those anecdotes which clearly express the love that people have for Barnell, that is the message. You could see as they express themselves the sincerity that they exhibited. It was not just mere words, but there were words that they said that clearly delineated to me what a powerful individual is. And I know it's true because I had a personal experience with Barnell. And he did some good things for me and my family. He will be missed. But on these occasions, we have to go to the scripture. We have to see what God has to say about Barnell and what God has to say to the family. And we have to be brief because time is flying so quickly. For Burnell, time is in suspicion, suspension. For us, time moves on. And we will, we will miss him. I'm reminded from the book of Mark, a very important piece of scripture. And this scripture, talks about Jesus in the boat. And most of you know that story. Jesus is on the Sea of Galilee. The Sea of Galilee is below sea level. And because it is below sea level, violent storms can be generated from the cool air coming down from the mountains, meeting the warm air blowing from the Mediterranean. And when that happens, the wind is torrential. The waves become almost unbearable. On that small sea, it really should be a lake. It's only about 13 miles long and about seven and a half miles at its widest point. Jesus, with his entourage, because there was not one boat, there were several boats, and they're out there. And why was Jesus there? Because he had been overwhelmed by the multitude. They were pressing in on him. And so he needed some aura and aura, just like all of us. And so he steals away, and he goes into a boat with his disciples, and he goes to sleep. He's tired. He's been busy helping people, like Barnell, busy helping people, the thousands of jobs that he had. And so Jesus had to rest. And as he was resting, the wind 
came down from the mountains that surrounded the Sea of Galilee and met the Mediterranean hot air. And all of a sudden, a violent storm erupted. And the disciples said, they hollered out, Jesus, help us. The storm didn't wake him up. What woke him up was the voice of the disciples. So he woke up. And what did he do? He said, peace, be still. And everything quieted down. And you know Kenya and kids? Barnell fought a hard fight. He suffered, but he's now at peace. And one may say, well, why did God allow that? He's a young man in the prime of his life, left a beautiful wife and small children. And we don't know the answer to that, but what we do know is that the will of God is solid, and we can rely on that. We know we have experiences from the scriptures where individuals have had hard times. You remember the story of Job. You remember the disciples. Every one of them were martyred except for one, and that one was John. And John was allowed to live. He was so beloved. Matter of fact, Jesus said to him, if it's my will, if it's my will you could stay here until I return. Some people have taken that literally. But John did pass. And he was on the Isle of Patmos. And he wrote a very powerful statement in the book of Revelation, found in Revelation 1-7. Behold, every eye shall see him when he comes in the clouds of glory. And Job, who experienced an incredible amount of pain and torture, said, regardless of what happens, I don't care if the worms destroy my body, yet in my flesh shall I see God. And if we're faithful, and we adhere to what God has asked us to do, Yet, in our flesh, we shall see God. Why? Because at the resurrection, at that great trump sound, and Gabriel stands in the air and blows that trumpet, we're told the first thing that will happen is that the dead in Christ will rise first. And that those of us who are still alive will be caught up with him in the clouds. And so shall be with God forever and forever and forever. Amen. We shall see God again. Our loved ones shall see God again. Barnero has moved on. And God guided him through the darkness of death to the lighthouse that's on the shore of heaven. He's now resting. And He's asleep. And when he hears that trump, our testimony is that he will be in that resurrection that will look upon the Lord and welcome him with great open arms. It is so interesting and so difficult as well for us to try to understand what occurred in this situation. It was clear that he was going to do OK. And then all of a sudden, things began to fall apart. We don't know why. We do not know the answers to those things. But what we do know, and what we can be certain of, even though we can be uncertain of all things other than this, is that we have the blessed hope of Titus 2.13, the blessed hope of the coming of the king. God, in the nature of Jesus Christ, will come again. The signs of the times are so indicative of that coming event. And those who have died in his name 
all those who have died in his name will see him face to face. Amen. So Barnero, you are asleep. And soon the resurrection will occur and you will be awakened. I'm reminded of a very important piece of information that I want to share with you. And not to prolong this, but this is, I think, a critical issue. And that is that Matthew 28, 20, that regardless of what happens, regardless of our situation and circumstances that surround us, Christ says, I am with you. And I'm with you until the end. You know, there's a story, story told of a couple who so anxiously wanted to have a child. And God blessed them with a baby boy. And this boy grew into a fine young man. And he went to an excellent school. And one day, while he was playing in the playground with his friends, he collapsed. And they rushed him to the hospital. And the family members rushed to the hospital as well. And he was under the doctor's care for at least three hours. Then the doctor came out, confronted the tearful mother, and said to her, the prognosis is not good. And then he walked away. And she shouted out, doctor, come back, come back. And he came back and he says, you know, God gave us this boy and we have prayed that he will continue to be with us. But God's will be done. God has taken our boy. And it's the same with Barnell. God gave Barnell to you, Kenya, and to the kids, and to the family, and to friends who testi testified of his wonderful personality. God saw fit to take him. And now he's at rest. But I'll tell you this. We need to trust in God. We need to know that the direction that God leads us is the correct one. God has decided to let Barnell rest. So we say, in closing, Barnell, fare you well. Fare you well until that great getting up morning. Fare you well, Barnell. And that great getting up morning, let me tell you about the coming of judgment. God's going to up and speak to Gabriel in that great getting up morning. Fare you well, Barnell. Fare you well. Now, Gabriel, blow your horn, for Jesus is coming again. Echo it, hilltops, proclaim it, ye plains. Jesus is coming again. Coming in glory, the lamb that was slain. Jesus is coming again. Nations are angry. By this we do know Jesus is coming again. Knowledge increases. Men wrote, run to and fro. Jesus is coming again. Look, he is coming with the clouds. And every, every eye shall see him. Fare you well, Barnell. Fare you well. See you in the morning.
relatives. So much appreciate joining them in this moment of mourning as well as celebration. We have celebrated the life of Barnell. We mourn his death. We have so much to celebrate concerning him because he made such a great impact on his community. We will be missed and we thank you for being here. There will be a couple of announcements after the closing prayer and I want you to stand by and listen to those announcements because they are very important and they will be made by Pastor Sheldon Bryan. Let us pray, Father God, we thank you for the life of Barnell Fail. He's now resting in the name of Jesus. He's awaiting that great getting up morning when he will stand on that river and shout, truly free at last, free at last, because we all will be free at that moment. We will receive eternal life where the mortal will put on immortality. And at that time, dear Lord, we will understand that deep commitment and love you had for us by sending your son, Jesus Christ, who bled, suffered, and died so that we may have the right to eternal life. We will experience the first death in all probability, but certainly if we're faithful, there will be no second death for us. We ask you, dear Lord, to be with the family, be with them in a very intense way. They are suffering a great loss, a supporter, and more than financial, but in terms of a role model. Let us learn from Brunel that we will be likewise, have that time when people will be able to stand for us and say what a great thing we have done in the name of the Lord, not for self-aggrandizement, but to be certainly a great help to others. Be with the, the, the relatives as they also mourn this very unfortunate situation. Guide us all, protect us all, keep us all. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you very much uh, for being here today. And uh, on behalf of the family, we just want to say a special thank you to all the friends and co-workers and, uh, who have made it here. We do have a few announcements to make. First of all, we will not be having an internment today, uh, but the family needs a few minutes uh, to just gather for us to have a family prayer to say our last goodbyes. We have prepared a, a repast downstairs. The Wasatch Church has been very uh, hospitable in preparing that. So we're going to ask if you could wait for the family downstairs while they say their last goodbyes. Uh, we're asking for the family and the pallbearers to remain in the sanctuary while we're escorted out with beautiful music. And uh, we really appreciate your presence here. And uh, we thank you for coming. And uh, we know that when we're downstairs, we'll have extra opportunities to share uh, what Barnell has meant to each and every one of us. The family is looking forward to hearing your stories of how Barnell has touched your life. But just for now, we're asking just for a few minutes for the family and uh, very close friends to be present uh, to say their last goodbyes. Thank you very much. <laughs>